Alrighty, we are here live with Lauren Mitchell at the Blue Green Room next door to Earl's Hideaway. She just got off stage from doing a real rocking set and getting the crowd all fired up. Thank you for taking the time to interview with us. My pleasure. First question I have for you is how long have you been a professional musician? Oh, um, well, I've been playing under my own name for uh, about four years now. Um, I've worked for probably about the last 10 years um, with other bands and, you know, just different, um, it, it under, in different formats, you know, but I've been playing, doing my own music for about the last four years. But I've been singing all my life. I've been performing all my life. I started uh, voice lessons when I was nine years old. Okay. So. So you were with other bands, like backup singing and stuff before? Yeah, doing that. Like some, I played with like some cover bands, some wedding bands, some top forty bands, you know, stuff like that. So it, it was all good though because it gave me stage time, you know, and I got to learn about, um, you know, how to interact with the crowd. Excellent. Um, in your four years of being a professional, what is your favorite venue to play in, and why? My favorite venue. Oh my gosh. Well, we're here at Earl's, so I gotta tell you that this was. This was actually really wonderful. I had a really great time here at Earl's today. Um, and probably, oh goodness, that's a really tough, tough call, but I know one of my favorites is um, definitely the side door at the Palladium Theater in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, it's a very small cabaret room. It's about um, 200 seats. And one of the things that I really enjoy about that room is that people come there to listen. It's not about, you know, drinking or partying or, you know, anything else other than the music. And um, it's, it's always a real joy to play there. That's the place where they had the after parties for the Tampa Bay Blues Festival, Correct. right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Been there. Nice place. Yeah. I really enjoyed it there. And you're right. There. You're right. It wasn't all about partying. It was see the musicians. Exactly. It's all about listening. The, that kind of atmosphere um, provides... Uh, a, it's a different kind of energy for us, and um, one of the things that personally I think um, I excel at as a vocalist and as a performer is um, those real slow, you know, soul ballads. And so when you do those in a room like the side door, it gets real quiet, you know, and you can hear every little nuance. So I really enjoy that room a lot. Nice acoustics. Yeah. Oh, great sound. There you go. Um, next question I have for you is living or dead? If you could jam with one person, who would that be? Eddie James. I knew that. Hands down, Eddie James. <laughs> and a close second would be Otis Redding. A very close second. Excellent. Uh, your entire music collection gets wiped out. What's the first CD you replace? Eddie James Live from San Francisco. Very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Young lady wants to be a professional singer. What advice would you have for her? Practice. Practice. Take voice lessons. Um, I'm sorry, I was hearing, I was hearing something out there. Uh, I, I, would tell, I would tell her to practice. I would tell her to definitely, um, you know, educate yourself. Uh, listen to everything you can get your hands on. Um, and, and go see a voice coach. I've been taking voice lessons since I was nine years old. I still take vocal coaching today. I think it's essential that um, we maintain uh, good vocal health in order to be able to go out there and give everything that you've got as a vocalist and as a performer five, six, sometimes seven nights a week. Awesome. Um, singer shows up at your door and says, Lauren, I'm going to sing one song just for you. Who is the singer and what is the song? Well, it's Eddie James. <laughs> Again, and, uh, oh gosh. Mm. There's so many, I mean, I, I, I would listen to anything that lady sang. I don't think she ever sang a bad note. <laughs> I really couldn't pick a favorite. I honestly couldn't. I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. I couldn't tell you. What kind of music did your parents listen to? Uh, uh, lots of. Um, my dad influenced um, my musical taste a lot um, by uh, playing me, you know, a lot of Motown, um, a lot of '60s soul. Um, so he he listens to a lot of that stuff. He also listened to. Uh, I know he has some Janis Joplin, you know, the Beatles and stuff like that in there, um, but. That's what Dad listened to. Mom listened to a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, I don't want to say classical stuff, not classical, but more um, uh, like some of that, like not and not choral. I'm trying to think, like the Ray Charles singers, you know, and and, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. you know, uh, like like groups. She she liked a lot of vocal groups. Okay. You know, like from the 50s and 60s. 
Alrighty. Um, what new artist has your attention? Mm. Huh. That's that's a that's a good question. Um, the last time I saw Jerika Singleton, I was very impressed by him. I really like what he is doing. Um, And I don't know if you could call her new. She's been on the scene for a long time, but I really enjoy um, Samantha Fish. I really enjoy her show a lot, and I've had a chance to, you know, spend some one-on-one -on -one time with her, and I just think she's a sweetheart. She's, we she's think a great girl. Yeah, we so. think the same thing. The, the day I met you, I got to spend a couple hours with Samantha. And oh, yeah? It was like the first five minutes, I have the little si sister syndrome going on. I know. Isn't she great? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's wonderful like she, that. She so. is amazing. Yeah, and I really like what she's doing, and I'll tell you something that I've noticed. I've, I've seen her a few times. I've been fortunate to, you know, do some shows with her um, a couple times over the last year, year and a half. And the last time that I saw her, man, I gotta tell you, that girl has really been working on what she's doing, and um, her her vocals have have really uh, improved. I mean, immensely. And I, I think that she's just, you know, she she's gonna be a force to be reckoned with in a few years. I mean, she kind of is already, you know what I mean? But she's yeah, she's really coming up. I really like what she's doing. I agree with you 100. <laughs> percent Last question and the hardest one. Oh no. Okay. In the four years you've been on your own, you've probably done a lot of interviews. I've done a few. <laughs> what question would you like to answer that nobody ever asked you? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> I guess maybe I would just like to, um, not so much a question, but I would just kind of like to let everybody know, you know, that um, we do we do what we do for for everybody else, you know what I mean, for all the people. Like, I mean, it's really gratifying for me to be able to to write music and to perform my own music in front of a crowd and have them respond. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's something that I would just like everybody to know. You know, we appreciate the, the response to what it is that we're putting out there. It's so the, the question would be, why do you do it? Why do I do it? Yeah, exactly. because I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> because I can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't do well waitressing, huh? Uh, actually, I did, but I'd rather do this. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time with us. We really enjoyed your show, and we wish you nothing but the best of success in your career. Thank you, Michael. You're welcome. Way, way, way back from when I was a little itty-bitty thing, you know? My dad, my daddy used to take me, you know, and he would sit me on the sofa, and he would pull out his records for me. He would get out all those records and he would lay them all out across the coffee table and let me look at the pictures while he played me his music. Yes. It's a big reason I think that I might be up here playing this stuff for y'all today. You know, my dad put it in my ear when I was too small to probably even really remember it, you know? So I got to thinking about all that good stuff that Motown and the 60s soul and all that stuff that my dad used to play for me, yeah. And I wanted to write a song that reminded me of all that music that I used to sit and listen to with my dad when I was a kid, you know? Can we all hear it for our dads, yo? Come on, give it up. And you know what? I'm up here and I'm talking and I'm thinking about it. And you know what? My dad is a veteran too, you know? So I just, man, I just kind of put that together right now. So I'm really happy to be singing this song for my dad up here today for y'all. I hope you like it. We call it soul music, y'all. Here we go. Hey.